Hi guys, so I'm here today to do my most anticipated new releases of 2016. So these are all books that are coming out in 2016 that I am especially excited about and want to make sure you're aware of. Of course there's probably more books that I will discover during the year but these, but these are the ones I'm aware of at the moment that stick out to me the most. Now I say new releases, I think a couple of these have perhaps already been released in other countries or have been released um, pre-translation, so this is a release of them as an English translation or for at least one of these books it is the paperback release whereas the hardback has already been released but most of them are certainly entirely new releases. We'll put the month they're going to be released in the description box along with links um, to where you can find them. I do also already own proof copies of a few of these books that I specifically requested from the publisher because I was that excited for them but I didn't want that to stop me sharing them with you guys. So without further ado, let's roll on to the books. I'm going to get the first one out of the way because I've already mentioned it a couple of times and that is Battling the Gods Atheism in the Ancient World by Tim Whitmarsh. This is a new non-fiction book being published by Faber and as the title implies is on Atheism in the Ancient World that looks at ancient Greece and Rome and is by one of my all-time favourite scholars. So yes, I am very pleased to see this one become a part of um, my uh, ancient history <laughs> bookshelves. And hopefully a few of you will be picking this up as well this year. And the next book I have to mention is another non-fiction book, but it's one that I don't have a copy of yet, but I'm incredibly excited for its release. And that is The Weak Suffer What They Must by Yanis Varoufakis. This book is being published by Vintage later this year and is written by the ex finance minister of the Greek government. The, the title is in fact a quote from um, Thucydides, an ancient Greek historian. It's basically a book about the current state of the Greek economy and the wider kind of economy of Europe and the world and how to improve on the situation. And Varoufakis is someone that I just incredibly respect politically and I'm very excited to see him release a book on this topic and I think it's going to be good. But the last non-fiction book I have to mention is Crossing the Sea by Wolfgang Burr. This is being published by Anne other stories and it is a journalist's account of um, the Syrian refugee crisis and the journey of Syrian refugees um, who are obviously fleeing Syria and he kind of went along on this journey, followed them to get a first-hand account of what it was like for them and this is the book that has come out of that. So, so that should be really good and one I highly recommend you all check out when it comes out. I only have two sequels to mention to you. Um, I don't read a terrible amount of series. I do prefer first standalone books, um, although there are some series I do really enjoy in saying that, but there are two books coming out this year which are part of series that I'm very excited for. And the first is the much awaited sequel to Rose Mannering's Roses, which is called Feathers. And I, although Roses came out a few years ago, I only read it last year and really enjoyed it. It was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but quite an individual retelling. Very creative and imaginative and I really enjoyed reading it. And as soon as I finished it, I was eager for more and luckily <laughs> it, I'm not having to wait too long as it comes out this summer and Feathers is another fairy tale retelling set in the same kind of world as Roses with kind of intermingling plot lines so that should be really good fun and I will definitely be getting my hands on that one as soon as I can um, but yeah if you don't know as well Rose has a YouTube channel so I'll link that down below. And next is the graphic novel sequel to Pretty Deadly. Pretty Deadly is another one where the first trade paperback Bind Up volume came out actually quite a few years ago but the single issues didn't continue on straight away and it's been a few years but the single issues have started to come back out, in fact there's already at least two single issues being released, however this is such a beautiful graphic novel series, it's kind of fantasy western, a bit of a confusing plot line, a lot of themes of death. Um, but just gorgeously illustrated and really fantastical and uh, captures your imagination. So I really want to own the trade paperback to match the first volume. I want volume two in a trade paperback and I cannot wait for it to be released. So I've been resisting um, downloading the uh, single issues and waiting for the full thing to come out. Now next I have a few collections of short stories that are getting released in 2016 that I want to talk about. The first is actually one that was released in 2015 in a hardback edition but only had a very limited print run so if you didn't pick up a copy or a bookshop near you didn't 
get some in stock. You can no longer buy the hardback online. But thankfully the paperback is being released in 2016 and it's a paperback version of a portable shelter by Kirsty Logan. So I had to fling that in there because I know a lot of you missed your chance to pick it up in 2015. I've already read it. I absolutely adored it. Fell in love with it. It was the first publication of Kirsty Logan's I ever read. So glad. So glad I did read it though. So glad I managed to pick up the hardback and got to read it in 2015. Five out of five stars short story collection. They're all kind of like new fairy tales with um, Scottish fable folk tale elements to them and they're really beautiful. I fell in love with Kirsty Logan's writing and I would highly recommend that you pick up the paperback when it comes out this year. Two that I have um, review copies of. The first being What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours by Helen Oyemi. This is a proof copy, this is not what the final thing will look like. Now correct me if I'm wrong but I believe this has already been released in the US. Not in the UK and in the UK it is being published by Picador which is an imprint of Pan Macmillan and I have never read any of, any of Helen Oyemi's books but I have heard amazing things about all of them. Boy Snowbird in particular is the one that um, people seem to rave about and I do have a copy of but as soon as I found out that Picador were publishing a copy of her short stories I had to have my I had to get my hands on it and I'm really excited to read this. What I've heard so far has been pretty rave reviews. We then have a collection of short stories published by And Other Stories and that is Vertigo by Joanna Walsh. Now And Other Stories are one of my favourite publishers. They publish mainly translated fiction and I believe this is another one that might already be out in the US but new to me. I believe these ones are set more in a realistic setting about real life but I've only heard fantastic things about it so I'm excited for this one. But next I do have a few novels to talk about with you, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear. So the first one is one that is definitely already out, but not in an English translation. So the English translation um, may already be released, but it was definitely a 2016 release, and that is Human Acts, a novel by Han Kang, and this has been translated by Deborah Smith. I read Han Kang's um, other novel that had been translated into English last year, which is called The Vegetarian, absolutely adored it. The prose were stunning, really beautiful imagery, really interesting. The author is actually South Korean originally, writing her books in Korean obviously. These translations are published by Portobello Books but yeah I'm hoping I enjoy this one just as much because if I do then Han Kang could quickly become one of my favourite authors. This one is based more on a real event in uh, South Korean history surrounding a series of deaths I believe. Now the next one which I haven't got a review copy of or anything is the first novel to be written by Kate Tempest and that is The Bricks That Built the Houses. Now you may or may not know Kate Tempest is one of my all time favourite poets. I first experienced her poetry in January of 2016, quickly fell in love with it. I absolutely adore her, she is a performance poet. Um, Unfortunately I missed a chance to go and see her when she was performing in Edinburgh which was a shame but luckily some of her performances are on YouTube and obviously I have her books to enjoy but I'm really excited to read her first novel. She She's a very emotive writer and she brings out a lot of emotions in me and I'm really hoping that she does this in her novel as well. Um, it will also be interesting to see how her um, writing style translates into prose. I then have Rufius by Sarah Walton. Um, Sarah Walton was kind enough to send me a review copy of her book which is published by Barbican Press. I am really excited for this one as you can probably tell by the front cover. It is based in ancient times. It's a modern novel set in 4th century AD Alexandria during the, the late Roman Empire. I get a sense that there's a bit of a comical vibe to this book. I haven't read a lot of books written now set during um, the Roman times. I've more read books set during um, the Greek times so that should be quite good fun and I've really been getting into modern novels set in ancient times more in the past year or two. So honestly there are a few other books that I am excited for the release of, either new translations like the first ever English translation of the Iliad by a Woman comes out this year published by Vintage which is exciting um, as well as a few other novels I've been sent review copies of that I'm looking forward to read but those are the ones I particularly wanted to mention to you guys and I'm really anticipating the release of my own reading of and um, hearing what you all think of them as well. Do let me know if there's anything in particular you're excited to uh, pick up in 2016 when it comes out. I'd love to hear about what your most anticipated releases are and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time guys, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!